Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. So today we're going to talk about uh, investors. What should I invest in? I get that question a lot, uh, and a lot of people are have some preconceived notions that are very defeating. And we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to show you. I'll show you some of the deals I've done, and maybe even some of the ones my students have done. But uh, so look, that's what we're going to do, and we'll be right back, and we'll get into it. All right, so those of you that are just getting here for the first time, look, I've got a best-selling book, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. You want to get that. It's the best 10, 20 bucks you'll ever spend, and if you don't like it, you can send it back for a refund. Uh, but it is, uh, it's made millionaires, made many millionaires now in the, in the country, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, so look, uh, if you just got here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Uh, you'll learn a lot here, and it helps the channel when you do that. So please do that for me. And uh, any questions you got, you just put them down on the bottom, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I don't care what kind of real estate it is. I've probably done it, just to be quite honest. I've been doing it for 42 years. So now let's get back to the question here. I'm going to bring up the uh, whiteboard. Uh, and so we're going to talk about that. Look. Many people that start to invest, they have some preconceived notions that really are defeating, really, really bad, bad preconceived ideas. And uh, so look, uh, first of all, we'll talk about, you know, what, what can you afford, okay? Look, I bought properties, the first properties that I bought, I couldn't afford them. I couldn't afford them. Uh, so it's okay to look at properties that are beyond what you can afford, as long as you adhere to the fundamentals that I teach which are always buy below market. If you're buying below market, you might find out that there's property that, <laughs> that is in your range, uh, but it's worth 400,000, say, and maybe your range is you know, 300, but you can get it for maybe 250 even. Those are the kinds of deals that I look for. But also, let's just say 250 is out of your range. Well, you find a property that's $400,000 value and you get it for 250, you're not gonna have any problem buying that property. You're not going to have any problem getting a hard money lender or worst case, you can assign it to somebody, which is what I did early on when I was you know, in my 20s. So, you know, uh, what market are you in? Look, the market I want you to be concerned with is whatever you're sitting in, whatever you're surrounded by. One of the biggest mistakes people do is they buy property at, in another city or in another state. That's the worst, you know, because I guarantee you while you're well, you're, while you're buying property blindly mostly in another state, somebody in that state is doing the same thing buying in your neighborhood. It's absolutely ridiculous. The deals are right at home. I've proved that over and over again because everything, I, I can throw a rock right now and I can land on a property and I can pick that rock up from that property, hit another one, hit another one, hit another one, and I can hit tens of millions of dollars in real estate that I personally own, that I personally negotiated. That is what's out there, but most people don't realize it realize that so back to uh, what can I afford uh, you know it, it there's a lot of leeway when it comes to like owner financing and what I want you to understand is that when a, a person puts a property up for sale they want to sell it you know and they appreciate when a buyer really wants to buy okay so number one is have it in your mindset that you are number one the best buyer when you're gonna buy something and that you will close that that makes the seller have warm feelings. And it, when you can, you want to talk to that buyer if you can. If you can deal directly with the broker, the selling, I'm sorry, the, the selling agent, the agent that has the listing, that will benefit you. Now, that doesn't always happen. If somebody brings you a deal, uh, you know, you want to honor that, you know, that they brought it to you first and so you buy it through them. I've even had people that sometimes when I'm, uh, that have represented me, they said, hey, Tom, I found a great deal. We start working on it. And I realized they're kind of in the way. And so what I do is sometimes I ask, uh, in this case, my agent as the buyer, say the buyer's agent, uh, I might say, hey, you know what? I can do better negotiating myself. Now, a lot of you maybe can't do that. But I will actually ask them to step out of the way, and I will pay them their commission on the side. And sometimes I'll let the, the broker's agent take the full commission. Uh, because the opportunity you get by having a broker represent you, uh, the, the selling, I'm sorry, the listing agent uh, is, and they don't have to represent you, but you want them to know you better than anybody else. Because if you have a relationship directly talking to the, uh, to the listing agent, e even if you have your agent, it's important that you talk to the listing agent so that they know you are the best person to buy. In other words, I don't have the ability to sell myself 
as being the best guy in the room to buy the property if all I'm talking to is is the agent that represents me. Now I'm relying on him. I'm telling him I'm the greatest. He's telling he's the greatest. And so there, there's some strategies and workarounds of that that you learn in the, in the mentorship. But, but for the most part, what you need to do is the, the listing agent needs to know that you are the best choice and that you are going to buy. So, and, and that you can afford it. Now, establishing that you can afford it, Look, a lot of times, you know, I've had to say, yeah, I got a buddy with money or I got a partner with money. And that's sometimes that's how it's ended up being. Because if you're looking at a property that's beyond your, you know, affordability, sometimes you either need to, A, go get a partner. Uh, in my case, the first deal I ever did, uh, I went to my, my boss. John Brooks was my boss and my old boss, the person I had previously worked for. And I went back to him and I said, hey, John, got this great deal. And he came out and took a look and he says, you're right. You know, there's probably $70,000 on the table. This is back in the 80s. And so in, in that situation, we could have bought it together. John had a better idea. He gave me $20,000, and he bought it by himself. That was much better for me because I realized a smaller share than I would have got if we were 50-50 partners, but nevertheless, a nice big chunk of cash. So you can do that too. That's why don't, don't rule out properties that are beyond your ability to buy by yourself. Okay, Don't do that. Also, uh, how much cash... Do you want to invest? So, again, that's a limiting factor. If you limit yourself to, you know, if you only have 10, 15, 20,000, now you can do that. You can work on land. You can find something where you can get away with putting 10, 20% down. down. That's pretty common with land. Uh, you know, if you get some owner financing, that's sometimes possible. I, I don't at all suggest you do a sub two in a declining market where the, uh, where, you know, you can put your 10% down and maybe clear out the agent, clear out the seller to they're going to hold the note in their name, but you're going to assume their debt, you know, the responsibility of paying it. Don't recommend it when things are tight. If, you know, unless, unless that amount is like 60% of what it's worth, not 60% of what they paid for it because the values could drop, but if it's 60% of what it's worth, then it makes sense because you're not going to have any problem getting it refied or selling it to somebody else as long as you adhere to my fundamental of buying below market. You've got to buy like 30% under market. You know, that's like a minimum. So, all right. So let's go to uh, setting a price range. Yep, same thing. A lot of people, do. these are kind of like the, the list of things that people do that are wrong. Uh, don't limit yourself by, by price. Uh, you know, why would you ignore a million dollar deal that you can get for half a million dollars, even if you can't afford half a million dollars? It'd be crazy to ignore that opportunity and, or, or not even try to find it. Looking for it is it's, it's fun, first of all. Uh, okay, I, now shopping rates, hard money lenders. Look, to me, this isn't terribly important. You can shop rates, of course. It's, you know, you want to know somebody that has the money that can deliver quickly. Because, and let me explain. People say, hey, Tom, this guy wants, you know, 12% and two points. And I'll say, well, what's the deal worth? And, you know, say, I'm getting this property, $200,000, and it's worth, you know, three fifty. dollars And I said, well, so that's fine. Give them, give them 15% interest, two points, going to cost you four grand up front, and no big deal. Because the alternative to that is having a partner that's going to take half of your $150,000 profit. Now it costs you $75,000. When you compare that, a partner taking half of the one fifty is seventy five. dollars now suddenly just paying, you know, uh, you know whatever, $4,000 and, uh, you know, a stiff interest rate for the, while you own it is very insignificant to what it costs you to have a partner. But a partner is like a second backup. So, you know, uh, so that's why I say you can't afford to pay market value. It's very important. You never pay market value. Listen, the reason I've been so successful is because I adhere to always buying under market. Same reason my students have been very, very successful. If you haven't seen my students, go to flipanythingusa.com. Take a look at all the success stories. We got people that are just killing it in land, houses, apartments, commercial buildings, industrial, the, the, all my students are now buying everything that, that I buy and have been buying for 42 years, so don't miss that. So, uh, look, you know, one of the main things you, you need to take away from this is don't sit still. Don't sit static. You know, if, if you do, you'll never make any money. If you don't do anything, you're never going to make anything. That's the truth. And so it's okay to look. Look at what's around you. Some of it may be more than you can afford. That's okay, because you may get a break and find something that's you can get for half of what it's worth. 
you know, you got to know value. That's probably the most important thing that you can do. And don't go far, don't go far away. And don't, you know, throwing money at something far away is foolish. It's just foolish. Watch the video I did on Steph and Cornelia. You know, uh, you can check that one. I'll put the links below. But uh, anyways, for, for, I, know I think I covered enough for now. Anybody can do this. It just takes a little bit of discipline. And, you know, just use your head. It's really common sense in large part. It's just common sense. You know, if it's worth more, uh, you know, it, buy it. If it's not worth more, don't. It, it's, if you keep your standards high, you won't be as busy as often, but you'll always make money. You know, if you keep your standards low, you'll, you'll, you'll spend your money like that. You'll, you mean, you'll, you'll already be up to your teeth in debt and, uh, and that with a very big margin of profit waiting for you. So if you do that, you'll be, you know, you, you, you'll be stuck. You'll be stuck. I don't want you to be stuck. So uh, let's, let's go back to the desk here. All right. So that's really the best advice I can give you on that, on what can I afford. Listen, don't limit yourself if you do. Uh, and I understand, you know, look, people have the mentality, I just want to pay cash. I only pay cash. Well, that's foolish. I mean, it's okay in some instances, if you're a, if you're a let me put it this way, if, if, you're, if you're building a business, that might make sense. Because the variable is business out there and, and, you know, whether or not you're going to have the business. That's different. Real estate, you're talking about, you, you know, finding something that you've already, have already understand that it's worth more than what, you, you, than what you're agreeing to buy it for. That's where the money is. Getting between what somebody has and what somebody wants. And look who's in the middle. That's who you want to be. The guy in the middle between what somebody has and what somebody wants. Anyway, so look, hope you enjoyed that. Again, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, never steer you wrong here. Get the book, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. And, uh, and when you have time, you certainly should take a look at the mentorship. Look at all these guys. I got, I got people in my class now, you know, making uh, millions of dollars. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. You know, Rich here, Mike Stizabot, three. Ken, I'm going to go see him uh, next week in Napa. He's made over a million, two. Uh, Tina, another knockout. And uh, Ron, same thing. Garrett, same thing. Uh, Chris, same thing. Uh, Liam, you know, he's he, a carpenter like me. You know, made 560000 relatively short time. Mechanic here, Steve, has his own shop. You know, the, the money he's making in real estate dwarfs. You know the income from business. That's 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 kind of the story. So, but the story was for me and for a lot of people. I mean, you know, I was in the cabinet shop business for nine years and eight months, and at the end of that nine years, eight months, I was only twenty-seven years old, and I was a millionaire. But I wasn't a millionaire from my business. I was a millionaire from my real estate investments, and that's what I want for you. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you uh, next time.